Hello everybody, hi, and this is Memorial Day, uh, Memorial Day Remembrance, uh, and also Dr. Ken's weight loss. How do those uh, match together? Well, we'll go through those in just a moment. But uh, Memorial Day uh, stands for the deceased of uh, our wonderful uh, military people uh, that have lost their life, but I always looked at it a little bit like an extension of Veterans Day also, because you have to take into mind uh, those that... Uh, <clears throat> Are, uh, have sacrificed and that are away from their loved ones, uh, family and friends and so forth that are serving today. Uh, I know <clears throat> my mom, uh, on my mom's side of the family, uh, she had 11, well, there were 11 children. She was one of them. Six of them were boys. And believe it or not, all of them uh, went into the service and served. And uh, they were heavenly brought together and back together uh, safely, believe it or not. Uh, that's uh, a wonder within itself. But uh, I always looked at Memorial Day as something much greater than that, uh, just based upon the fact of what they have suffered, uh, those people that have lost their life uh, in uh, military service for us, for our country, for the red, white, and blue, okay, for the United States. And uh, I thought I'd give you a little bit of information about my life uh, in relationship to this. Uh, in between my junior and senior years in college, Vietnam was uh, really hot, uh, and they actually had a drawing uh, where they added, uh, needed additional people to uh, go into the war. And I always jokingly say I, I, won, uh, I won the drawing. I was one of the first ones. My birthday was uh, picked out May 9th, uh, and uh, from there I, I went from uh, uh, college where I was going to school. Uh, I went right into Chicago. That's where the draft board was at the time. Uh, for my physical, and I was at the, the best of health, I thought. I was uh, between uh, football seasons. I was I'd, I'd played uh, years in football, but during the examination, apparently they found a health problem that I had, and I was uh, put on something like 4-H, <laughs> so to speak. Not 4-F, totally excused, but uh, apparently uh, they were going to send all the healthy ones first, and then I would be secondary as far as if they needed any additional soldiers. Uh, fortunately, uh, I was not taken. And the reason why I say fortunately, because I know a member of those people that were at that, uh, that day, that day of examination, uh, of which two of my high school friends died in Vietnam. And I always pondered the thought as to what uh, my wife and our adopted children would be like uh, maybe not even adopted uh, by uh, my my wife and myself, uh, what their lives would be uh, if I were not uh, actually uh, here at this time. Uh, I've pondered that numerous times. Uh, interesting to find a health problem where you're uh, playing uh, some sport like football for so many years and not actually uh, realizing that you have a health problem until it was found out by, so to speak, accident. Uh, it's interesting uh, that also that uh, over the weekend, one of our writers in our newspaper, the Arizona uh, Republic, actually uh, put a very interesting article out uh, concerning uh, Memorial Day and uh, what we should consider. And he mentioned uh, Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan, uh, most of us have seen that movie. Uh, and at the end, uh, as the one sergeant was uh, losing his life and told the one brother that was left out of, I forgot, maybe four that were, all the other ones were killed, uh, that uh, he mentioned the words earned it. Uh, and that soldier had already earned it. Uh, but uh, as the writer had mentioned, that earned it phrase was for us. Those that did not go into service, those that did not serve, did not uh, have to worry about uh, injuries or whatever else from military or death, uh, and have we earned it in relationship to what we do and how we look at uh, America and what it stands for? And uh, I always uh, never, I never thought about it in re relationship to that, but those words earned it, I think, will always stay in my mind uh, for those of us who did not go in the military. And what are we doing to earn it for those that did go, either lose their life or have come back handicapped or disabled, whatever else? Uh, and uh, that uh, Saving Private Ryan, I've used numerous times uh, in explanation of something, and that is that not until World War II during that time were women actually uh, recognized 
as this condition that was similar to men. Very, very interesting because the men's uh, uh, fibromyalgia, shall we say, was always looked upon as some kind of disease, but it was not really understood. Whereas women's, it was psychological, it was psychotic. I mean, they put you in hospitals, they did experimental surgeries and so forth and so on. Not until World War II did they put one and one together, where the symptoms of females uh, were the same as symptoms of males, and they started actually treating you. Of course, the paper in 1990, American College of Rheumatology, actually explained that also to uh, help people understand uh, at least the basics of fibromyalgia. Uh, we've gone on and on with numerous things in relationship to that. But it's very, very interesting uh, that uh, it kind of fits together, uh, the Saving Private Ryan and so forth and earned it, uh, and also the fibromyalgia aspect in itself. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, and I always look at it also, so, you know, have we earned it in relationship with those people that have not had fibromyalgia uh, to understand what fibromyalgia patients actually are going through? It's such a difficult, difficult thing. As far as my weight loss is concerned, it's also related to fibromyalgia. Uh, and it's very, very interesting. I don't have fibromyalgia. I've never been diagnosed with it. I, I think I would know what it would be at this point. I have other uh, health problems. I've tried to stay as healthy as I can, healthier than my patients. I don't like to talk to them about my health problems. But uh, the uh, uh, my weight loss... It's very, very interesting. I've always watched very, very closely, as I mentioned, to try to stay healthier than my, my patients. And so what I did, uh, was I, I kind of just said, you know, uh, I always try to watch my diet, what I eat and drink and everything else and so forth. And, but from, uh, let's see, at 2017 Thanksgiving time in November to March, April 2018, kind of let myself go. I enjoyed whatever I wanted. I ate whatever I wanted. I drank whatever I wanted. Uh, I didn't watch. Uh, I, I exercise every once in a while. I, I try to exercise, uh, go to uh, exercise club uh, three, four times a week at least. Uh, but I even let that kind of trim down and, and uh, you know, I was having too good of a time. I figured at this age, wow, what, what's going to happen, right? Well, uh, and I always, uh, uh, at the beginning of the year, by February at least, I always go in and get my annual and so forth. But I waited. I waited uh, through Easter and then uh, late uh, March, uh, sometime April, I went in for uh, evaluation and they did the blood tests and urine and so forth and got the test results back. And by the way, the doctor says, uh, well, let's see here, your cholesterol is high, your triglycerides are high, uh, you're pre-diabetic. We got some medications for you. We want to put you on right away. And I said, wait a minute. I know what I did. I know what I need to do. And give me about three more months, and I don't think I'm going to die in three months. But I'm going to show you what actually happens if you really take care of yourself. And so what I did was I went on uh, what I give my fibromyalgia patients. I, I went on what's called a restricted hypoglycemic diet. That's the last, one of the last times you can hear to say the word diet, okay? It's weight loss, proper weight loss, okay? Now, what I did was I took, and I've told you this before, I took sugar, gluten, trans fatty acids, and dairy out of my diet. Why? Because they're all are called, are, are inflammatory. Not all of them for everybody, but some of them are. And so that restricts, that not only get, keeps you unhealthy, but also it restricts your body's ability to function normally, and your metabolic rate gets all messed up. You burn fat through your metabolic rate. Uh, and what I did was, uh, although I'm not a heavy drinker, believe me, uh, but I also stayed off of beer because beer is a wheat product. And so that's one of, that's one of the glutens. And gluten does have an effect on me. So I, I made sure I stayed off of that. I also uh, went on something called a low glycemic uh, food uh, feast, so to speak, uh, carbohydrates. A lot of people say, don't eat carbohydrates, they're bad for you. Well, that means you're gonna have to stay off of all fruits and vegetables, okay? <laughs> because almost all of them have some form of sugar. All right. Carbohydrates uh, are, are really very, very easily controllable. Uh, they did tests where they, they ran uh, glucose tests from zero to 100 on, on each fruit and vegetable to find out exactly how much uh, carbohydrate there is. And they rated it from zero to 100. If you could stay below the 50 level, you're going to be very, very healthy. For those people that uh, eat a lot of carbohydrates that are above 50, the, uh, 50 points, then you can have a problem, especially if uh, you're pre-diabetic or you're already diabetic. 
And if you're already diabetic, you know what I'm talking about. So low glycemic foods are most fruits and vegetables, but you have to stay off the starches. You have to stay off of, you have to stay off of especially white potatoes, which is a real weakness for me. But let's say you want to have white potatoes. So then you balance it with something that's a low glycemic. So let's say white potatoes are 70 or 80, okay? But then you, you eat, uh, say, uh, uh, a sweet potato uh, and maybe some broccoli, okay, or whatever, uh, or lettuces. And they, if you add those together, divide by two, it might come out to 40 or 45. Voila, boom. So the low glycemic foods actually help get rid of that high glycemic aspect if you balance it out. So you don't have those real high uh, sugar runs and then boom, it drops down again. And within three months, I went from 215 pounds to 179 pounds. Yes, that's 46 pounds. On the other hand, my patients started wondering if I was sick because I started losing so much weight. No, it's just getting rid of a lot of garbage in your system. Matter of fact, I went back for tests uh, to my my physician, my family physician, and he said, well, wow, you did a great job, fantastic. I can't believe everything is back to normal. So you can control things, you can, okay? Uh, now, I'm up to about 184, 185 pounds. Keep in mind, this has been going on since, let's say, uh, well, say, uh, the summer of June, July of 2018, and now it's uh, almost, uh, what, June? So I'd say a year, almost a year, where I've kept the same weight. And I've actually tried to gain a little weight back because I've, I've lost so much. I went from like a 17 and a half inch neck to 16, a 39 inch waist to 36. Uh, the good news and bad news, I had to go and buy all sorts of clothes because my uh, extra large clothes started looking like I was wearing a dress. And so I had to get rid of that. Hi, Tina Marie, how are you? Hope you're doing better now. Yeah, great, I'm doing fine. Anyway, so I thought I would just let you know how the doctor lost this without going on a diet. Now, look, there's a lot of different diets out there, okay? And I have to refer some of these. There's a keto diet, and they promise uh, no diet. It's called a keto diet, and yet there's no exercise and no diet. Well, if there's no diet, why do they call it a diet, okay? Anyway, uh, they promise uh, they can use 30, 30 pounds in 21 days. There's the shark tank diet. Uh, where there's pills involved, you can lose 27 pounds in 21 days. Again, no exercise, no diet. Why are they calling it a diet if it's not a diet? <laughs> okay, anyway, there's the vinegar uh, cider diet, uh, diet. Uh, apple cider, vinegar, apple cider diet. You've heard of that before. You lose 20 pounds in two weeks. Uh, the coach's diet, which is just pure exercise. You've got the two-week diet, which I love. It's for the slimming for beautiful women. It's those that are going to go on a red carpet or something. You want to fit in that dress just extra special. So you go on this two-week, uh, I would say probably starvation-type diet uh, to slim you down. Uh, but keep in mind, fat cells are like balloons. And so if you have a balloon, you can blow it up, right? Well, if you relieve or, you know, there's, there's one diet that you drink this stuff and you see all of these uh, fat cells just disappear, all right? Any cells that are left? They just keep expanding. If you don't change your intelligent eating, okay, if you don't change uh, to low glycemic and stay off of sugar, gluten, trans fatty acids, dairy, those products, those fat cells will keep on expanding. They just don't explode. They're just getting bigger and bigger. You have less fat cells, but they just keep on building. They just get, get bigger and bigger. So you're not really getting any benefits out of this. How many of you have been on a diet and then you gain all your weight back? Okay, and usually you wait, not only do you gain your weight back, but more of it because you haven't changed your eating habits. You haven't changed the style of your eating. So I gave you all sorts of wonderful uh, little things to, to use during uh, this period of time. If you want to lose weight and you want to stay off of it, okay. There's one other thing that I did. Uh, I just kept my exercise. Uh, I don't do a lot of heavy exercising. I, mean, I usually treadmill. I do some weights. Uh, at this point in my life, I'm not interested in being Arnold. Uh, I just want to keep what I have, so that's what I do. Walking is excellent, fantastic for you. But in mid-morning, what I would do is I would have maybe some carrots or I would have some almonds, maybe a handful of almonds or carrots. And so that would keep my blood sugar level also at an even keel rather than getting it uh, all of a sudden whoop, drop down and you can't do your work uh, and you're real tired. And make sure you drink some fluids, also water, very, very important. 
help wash that out. So I gave you some secrets on myself. If you have any questions on what I did, a little bit more information, detail, call me, 480-948-4955, 480-948-4955. Dr. Ken Mewich, Stetson Chiropractic, part of the Malibu Wellness Center. Make sure you do that. Uh, and uh, I appreciate your calls, or obviously uh, Facebook. You can, you can question and ask anything that you need. Anyway, take care. Sorry if I took extra time. Eh, not too bad. Maybe an extra couple of minutes. But uh, again, stay off the inflammatory foods. Uh, stay on low glycemic. Try to stay a little bit active. For those people that have handicaps, disabilities, so forth and so on, you can always move certain parts of your body. Just work on those areas. Start slowly. Any exercise problem starts like eating an apple, a bite at a time. You know, you know you're not going to go back to uh, running marathons or exercising like you did if you have had an injury or if you have uh, some disability. So that's the most important thing. The same thing you did while I was in CT for about the same time you. Just got me. I'm back on track now. For almost a year since I've been home in Arizona, I went back on the regular. Hey, Tina, give me a call. Let me know. I'll have a chance to visit some more. Take care, uh, everybody. Have a wonderful holiday. Remember those that uh, are no longer with us because they lost their life. They gave uh, their, their all for our country. But also, what can you do? Have you earned it for these people, right? I don't kind of think you look great. See you tomorrow. Okay, Cindy. Hey, thank you very, very much. Anyway, everyone have a great day. Enjoy. Relax. And look forward to seeing you next week, 1230 p.m. Monday, with another wonderful subject. Bye-bye now. By the way, I save each and every one of these, so if you want to check back, this is number 68, 68 one I've done thus far, okay? Check back and see what I have to say. Bye-bye. Much love to everybody.